Welcome to Flat Earth QED. The Earth is obviously and observably flat. This has been demonstrated by a image that has been composited by a team of people and dissected by many. The image was taken by Anthony Riley from St. Bees and the image was of Ireland and the Isle of Man. Without further ado, I'm going to pass you over first of all to Anthony Riley and then shortly after Shane Cook and Chris Monk to discuss and dissect the findings that have been gone through with a fine tooth comb by many, many people. So first of all, if I can introduce Anthony Riley and say a big warm hello, if you can tell us a little bit about the image and how it was taken. How are you doing, Anthony? Hi, pal. Okay, um, I'll share my screen first off. Um, that'll be the first thing I need to do. <clears throat> and essentially what I'm going to do is put all of the documents that are in this folder in a Google shared drive. I haven't set one up yet. It'll be linked to this video in the description box at the end. Um, I'm sure one of them, Ranty or uh, whatever, can sort one out for me. Um, essentially, at the end of October 2017, we just went for a breakaway. Um, part of it, the trip was to see if I could capture St. B from St. B, see if I could capture Blackpool Tower at 50 miles away. And I got up there and I realized that it was hazy over there and I, I just couldn't see uh, what I was looking for. <clears throat> so I get to where I was and literally I'm, I'm in tourist mode and I'm just going to play one video. There's no sound with it. I'm going to mute the sound and you don't need to see any sound. Um, but you can see uh, from the video that I am clearly in tourist mode. This video has not been released publicly. It's been discussed privately between myself and Ranty and a few other people. Um, but this is at the top of the, uh, the cliff, uh, um, the Google elevation height of 52 feet. Now, it's been... I think, I think you'll have to present there, Anthony, I think. Yeah. No, no, we're good. We're good. Uh, there Just we go. Cl click on nice Anthony's box, uh, Chris, and you'll get it locally. But it is going out to the audience. Oh, I see. Okay. Thanks. So you can see by this video that I'm just looking, I'm looking around. I'm not really doing anything flat earthy. I'm just, I'm on the tripod. I'm looking around to see what I can see. Play with my camera, play with the zoom, play with the focal range, play with, just play with, play with the camera. This is all I'm doing. Um, I wasn't looking for anything particular. I'd already established and satisfied myself in my mind that I wasn't going to see Blackpool Tower on this particular occasion. <clears throat> so I'm just looking around and I'm not looking for anything. I didn't take any um, measurements. I didn't do any prep for it. I just took the picture or took the video because this is what I could see at the top of this hill. Now, as I say, this video is not public. This video has been held back because I wanted to keep it private because there's information in here that I find val valuable. Okay, so now what I'm going to try and do is when I can find my controls again. There we go. Pop these back up here. We can see this land <clears throat> far right of Isle of Man. And I don't really know what this land is, but I know I wasn't expecting to see it. Now, it was a crystal clear day. And I'm looking in this particular video, I'm looking at this land mass with things on it. And I'm looking at this structure, whatever this structure is. And to date, even as of now, we were unable to identify what this is. I, I, if you look carefully, you can see that there appears to be smoke coming out of the top of it. And in my opinion, it's an industrial chimney of some kind. But as of today, right now, it remains unidentified. We can't locate it. Um, we've looked and looked and looked and looked, and we just cannot locate it. As a genuine plea to anybody out there, if anybody can find out what this is, based on the evidence that we've got, please let us know. Anyway, <clears throat> as I take this video, I'm looking and I'm trying to focus on things of issue, and I can see this thing. And I, I, I swear on, on my mum's life that it feels like I'm looking through the condensation on a cold window on a, on a winter's day. And it's as if I'm looking just through a little porthole of the atmosphere. It's very far away. It's very difficult to see. And I'm watching it change whilst I'm recording it. It's, 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 it's kind of change, shimmering in the atmosphere. It was very surreal. Now, there was an, a little snip there of another bit of land, which I want to point out because, it, like I say, a lot of this land that we're looking at here, we're, we're unable to identify Id identically what it actually is. There's another peep of land that peeps through here. Um, so if anybody knows what this land that we're looking at is, let us know. Um, but I got the impression, based on what I was actually looking at, 
that it was really far away because I couldn't focus on it. It was going beyond the focal range of the camera. Um, and it was it was very difficult to focus in on. It was it, it just felt like it was really far away. Now there is a clue that we've just seen there. There is a boat. And although we've identified this boat, we know where it goes to and from. We know what cargo it carries. It carries coal. Um, and we know who operates it. We know what its circuit is. We know all the details about this boat. Um, it may be a red herring, may not be. Don't really know. Um, but it's it's a cool it's a cool piece of uh, footage. And this stack, this chimney, or whatever this structure is in the in the in the foreground or the background or whatever it is, it's the only piece of information that we do not know. However, at my position is that I am looking at Ireland, but we are unable to identify where. And we've looked and looked and looked. So that's that's the first part of the evidence. And then I'll play one other file, which is the main the meat and the, uh, the main bones of the um, the observation I did. And when I get to the end of this um, observation, I'll be passing you over to Ranty, primarily because Ranty was the one that did a lot of the um, lining up. Um, so this is the video that went um, public, and. The reason why this one went public was because when I saw that land, it was it was it was just unbelievable. <clears throat> now, I'm only documenting this because this is where I took the photo from, because I, I realised I was looking at something really far away. And this point is elevation um, is is sighted as 35 feet, and this is the one that everybody's seen. <clears throat> now, there are arguments over the exact elevation height. I'm citing 35 feet because it's what Google Earth says, and this is your working model. If it turns out to be something other than 35 feet, don't shoot the messenger, okay? But when we zoom right into the land here, we see a little bit of looming or atmospheric something or other. Don't quite know what we're looking at there. But when we go across here, we're seeing land. We're seeing some kind of something, probably a boat. Um, but there's, there's things that are in this that shouldn't be there according to the line of observation, that the line of sight. And they are clearly far in the background. This is It's really difficult to focus on this. Camera's not focusing. It's, it's struggling to focus because it, it doesn't see it. So I'm messing around with it, trying to get something that's useful, and it's hard. This is how I could tell that it was far away. This is why I put the video out saying, is this, is this island? Is it Scotland? What is this land? Because it's, it's in my opinion... It's really far away. There's a lot of land there. Now, the argument is that it's just the Isle of Man. But this land is the closest piece of land to us other than Morgul Lighthouse. So, And I was really struggling to get it. So it was like I'm either looking through a dense layer of atmosphere and I'm, see I'm just about seeing it, or I'm looking through a porthole that was allowing me to see straight through the atmosphere. But nonetheless, in my opinion, in my, in my perception, that was really far away. And in my opinion, it was Ireland. It's about 80 miles away. Um, as the video goes on, goes down the hill, and basically I just showed where I've come from. Okay, so it's not that big of a deal. So, minimize that, get rid of that. And then <clears throat> I'll just, I don't know whether I should do the maths now or whether I should do, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do, um, I'll, well, I think well no, let's, let's, I mean. at this stage, I think, Anthony, now, now you've detailed what the picture is and where it was taken and such. Um, we've gone through what we've captured. So this is the, this is it. This is what we're working with. This is the image. This is the video yeah, that the this image is the video. created from. So now, thanks to Jem Panda, he identified Mackle Lighthouse for us. That started the ball rolling. We did about 25, 20, 25, 30 videos or observations at Hangouts about this. And essentially, it was peer review. It was peer reviewed by our peers. And we were able to see what the position was by the way that that there is something that's important don't quite know what that is but there's a structure there anyway in any event um this is peer review you guys have done many a hangout i've maintained my position at all times i have never once changed any part of my story other than to for the sake of discussion discuss it now as we go down the island um we'll see that this is this is the area that everyone can generally identify and then Come on, I don't even think this is the right video, Nathan, to be honest. I think it's the next one. Because I don't remember it doing that, if I'm honest. Let's do the next one. 354, so it must be 35. Must be this one. Yeah, as long as we get at least one 
on this hangout at least one take of the actual bit that's been composited and then I'll hand over to Ranty. Uh, I think it might have been this one. Okay, perfect. So this is this is the uh, I think I'm sure this is the official video that was released. Now <clears throat> Yeah, I'm sure it's this one. There's the land that's disappeared in the background. The one the what the video that I needed to do is the one where it goes down the left-hand side of the island. That's the one I really need. Ranty, if you can help me with what number it was supposed to be, I can't remember which video it was. Uh, it was 0352. Hmm. That was the one I was just on. All right, let me do 052 because I've clearly I've clearly got muxed it with 0352. 0352. So this is the one that everybody's seen. Okay, so apologies for wasting a little bit of time. Um. So we zoom in on the area that is most people are able to identify, and we see Mackle Lighthouse, which appears in the shot around about here. It's just zipped past it, but we come past past it in the end. And we're looking at the peaks there. There's Mackle Lighthouse. Jeremy identified that. Shout out to Jeremy. Um, and we're looking at basically this land that's here because this is as far as I can see. And the issue is. What is the land that we're looking at? What is this town? What is this city? What is this landmass? What are these buildings? Um, there's a boat in the image. We can identify all of the items that we see on here. Um, and Ranty was the one that did all this. And essentially, th that's really the end of the shot for me. Um, it was all taken at the end of October. I sat on it for months because I didn't really realize what the value of it actually was. It was when Ranty spotted it and he said, hey, have a look and have another look at this and see what you think. It appears that you've got something interesting here. And I agree, it is interesting. Um, it appears that we're seeing island on both sides of the Isle of Man. And if that's the case, the curve calculation for, for what we're actually looking at is huge. Essentially, right down at the far end of the island, we're looking at, well, it's about 120 miles worth of, obs uh, it's 120 miles worth of observation, way beyond the camera limits. It's not supposed to be able to do that. And I'll try and pause it. There we go. I'll try and pause it at the point. Um, if we are looking at Ireland, it's game over for the ball. If we, Even if we're looking at Isle of Man, it's still game over because we're seeing way more than what we should be. Um, should I go through the, the curve count maths, Nathan? No, if, we, if, we can now, if we can now go through Ranty, I'm trying to keep this as concise as possible. So at this stage, essentially, without being too rude, that, that's your involvement <laughs> over. So that's that's your bit. That's what we've taken. That's the image. That's the video that has then been turned into a composite. So let's just check we've got Ranty with us. How are you doing, Ranty? Yeah, not too, not too bad. I'm going to use your real name. I'm sorry to do this to you, Shane. But so Shane Cook is the person that has basically taken this video and composited it together in order to form a, a image, a composite image that we can actually study. So I've got your screen presented if you want to show us anything hopefully it'll be a lot okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah do so, you want yes. the hangout link displayed because if not you better not share my screen right at this second oh okay thank you for letting me know <laughs> okay let me know when i'm not sharing you're not sharing okay right. okay yeah move that out of the way and I should be ready to go. Just let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Right, off you go. Okay. So basically, uh, the lower image here, the, the one at the bottom, is the image that we've been displaying and showing for the last couple of weeks or so. Um, there's been a lot of heated debate as to what was actually, which villages were where and... Uh, what part was Douglas and, you know, if we could actually see as far as the end of Douglas. So not being any, not being, being mean to be rude to my um, skills with the, um, the composite, everything's correct on the composite. The composite is, is as good as it could possibly be. But I decided to go to the contrast and, um, try and highlight, uh, try and play around with it a little bit so I could bring out some more stuff in the image. So what you'll see is you'll see the the center image is now 
much clearer. You can see it's the same image as the one with Leaf, exactly the same. It's just been changed with the contrast and the brightness. And now we can see a lot of details that were missing before. So I'm going to start over on the right hand side and we're looking at uh, Magold Lighthouse, which is here. Then we come into the town. And if I come into Google Earth, you can see that the town itself is here, which is perfectly lined up here. We have another part of the town, which is here. And a couple of buildings that are identified here. But this was the part that um, that broke the entire uh, image wide open for me. And that was when I identified this hill. And the hill comes all the way along and it comes all the way down and it ends up in, I think it's Ballacanel, um, down here. So when I was able to I, see the on this image, I was able to clear as day see the hill and match it up with Google Earth. Now what we now we can start to see where everything else is falling into place. So at this part on the hill here, I put a little block here on Google Earth, but this is a bunch of houses that were sat on the hill and it helped me to line it up um, exactly. I can show you those houses actually on uh, on Google Earth now. And here they are, all sitting on the hill, just in this location here. Okay, so back to the image. Um, also, what we were able to see is the features of the, the land. So you had some of the um, erosion that's taken place on the side of the Isle of Man, and it's created these ravines and crevasses, and uh, you've got some areas of, of sandy area, which is here. And you can see that this is a slope that comes down. You've got the slope again that comes down here. You've got the ravine here, which is the ravine here. As it follows the hill down into here, you can actually follow the hill down and you can actually see individual things like this area here is this area here. You know, everything is very, very clear. You can take a look at the, the mountains above and you can see that they're in the same location. So what this takes us to is the town here, this this Balacanel. But uh, it's been mistaken for these houses here. Well, clearly you can see on the on the high contrast image down here that in this um, sort of ravine area here, the town sits on the right hand side here and at the bottom of the hill. So when we come down to the bottom of the hill and we've got the ravine area here. What we're actually seeing is we're actually are seeing some houses in that location, but the a lot of this town, I say it's a town, it's not a, a huge town and there's a lot of trees around it. So you wouldn't expect to see that many. Also, you've got obstructions in the way you've got the hill coming down. Um, in any event, this is where the town is. There's no denying it from the composite, from the hills matching up, from the, uh, the hill coming down here, everything is just, saying that this is where that town is and should be evidenced here. Um, next, we come along and we actually do come to a town um, which is sat here. Uh, if I go to another image that I have made up, I've got all these uh, names of everything. We have Baldrine. So this is Baldrine here. Um, this is Balacanel. Uh, and Balaga is the town that's on the hill here. Um, so now that we know that we're in this location, we'll be coming over to the Tuft of Trees, which has been a, a topic of great <laughs> uh, fun for the last couple of days. Uh, Tuft of Trees is here. And this is the end of Douglas. Here we have the end of Douglas. And what we have at Douglas is we have the harbour where the boats come in. And it's a big industrial complex. And we have um, some very large buildings sat on the edge of the, on, on the hill here. And we have two little uh, lighthouses that are just inside the harbour entrance uh, in this location here. So you can see the four big lights on top of the hill. Yeah, and you can see the light underneath it and another light here and another light there. These ones, you know, you can argue and say, let's just say that they're just a pixel or two, they're nothing. 
but these are very, 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 very clear. And through process of elimination, taking us across the, the map, it can only end up in the one place, which is Douglas. Now, I'm going to show you a, a quick video uh, just to show you um, these buildings on the hill. We have the building one, two, three, and this small one here. And this is the exact line of sight into the from where Anthony actually took the uh, the video. So you can clearly see these four very prominent buildings sat at the harbour on Doug, at Douglas. So it's it's one hundred percent sure that these are the buildings that we're looking at. Which then begs the question: What else is on the map? Uh, sorry, the image. So on Google Earth. It shows that the end of the Isle of Man is here. This is the last point of the Isle of Man. It's some very low lying ground. And I'll show you this on Google Earth. Um, if we come up here and we go to this very, this outcrop here, which is the very furthest um, that we can actually see on the image. It's the furthest we can go. And right at the bottom, we have a lighthouse. And you can clearly see it there. The lighthouse is called lagness and it looks like this and here we have it on the big screen so that you can get an idea of how it how it would appear um and i'm now going to show it you on the composite so this is where google earth says the end of the isle of man is up here the last point of the isle of man so when we go down to the composite and we look into the last point of where the Isle of Man should be, which is here, as we scroll in and we get closer and closer, you can clearly make out there is a solid object in the exact same location where you would expect to find that lighthouse on the end of the Isle of Man. Which also begs the question then, what's all this extra land to the left? And what's all the land behind it? because you can see the contrast change from where we know this is the Isle of Man. You can see the mirage in underneath, the, well, very, very little mirage in actually uh, at the Isle of Man. But when you come over to this other piece of land over here, you can see the clear band saying that there's a, a difference between the land that we're looking at this side and the land that we know and we've identified here clearly is the Isle of Man. So it's unequivocally island. It's the only thing that it can possibly be because there is no more land past this point. This land here, all this extra land here has to be something other than the Isle of Man. And when we go to the map and I show you what I mean, the line of sight takes you to these mountain ranges behind. These mountain ranges are 145 miles away and should be beyond behind two miles of curve, two miles of curvature. And yet we are seeing them in the in the image. There is no doubt in my mind, after matching everything up on Google Earth and these composites, everything from the the roads coming down, the the houses on the hill, the ravines, identifying this to identifying Douglas here. This has been forensically gone over and you can see it clear as day how much extra land there is there. And you can actually see the lighthouse where you would expect to find it on the end of the Isle of Man. And this lighthouse is only 23 meters in elevation at 51 miles. And that's me done. Absolutely sensational. And I've been describing that lighthouse as a diamond and there is no other word for it because that's what it is. At this point, I'm going to hand over to Chris Monk. Can you hear us, Chris? Yep, I can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Awesome, awesome presentation, guys, so far. It's excellent. 
you're Thank presenting you. over to you. You explain your part of this puzzle. Okay, so what I did is I took all of that data and brought it into a software program, Blender. And as I zoom out here, you'll see that I took the locations and, and stuff, all the points that uh, Randy had identified in the composite images and everything and put them to scale on the Earth sphere. And, and you'll be able to see here when I click on it that its dimensions are accurate to 7,917.126 miles, etc. So everything is to scale. And uh, let's see when I click on the Eye of the Man on the very top, I put uh, the Eye of the Man and our objects just top dead center because it's a lot easier. So it's top dead center. So at the center point where that little cursor is, when I zoom way, way in here, you'll see is Muckhold Lighthouse. Muckhold Lighthouse. lighthouse. Yeah. Get that all in one, in one mouthful here. So there's a little lighthouse to scale sitting above the surface of the Earth, which is right here at the bottom, represents zero. This is like the zero line. This is the thickness of the, its elevation at 84 feet above sea level. It's a lighthouse. This point here is its focal point, which goes out to uh, 213 feet is the focal range. Way, way out towards the, out here somewhere, it ends up at 213 feet. That's the distance the light shines, basically. Now, what I found interesting, let me go to the other, what's the wireframe on the bottom? Let me just view this from the top real quick. So I took all the datum points and come up with a this is a, <clears throat> basically a map an elevation map of the Isle of Man. so it's it's based on i took a lidar map which is a laser light and detection and ranging map and converted that into a wireframe from the solids in in blender so that we actually get a, a wireframe mesh of the the basic topographical features topography of the Isle of Man. so elevations will appear as in the bottom part of the screen here and then I further took the composite images that uh, Randy provided and super superimposed them. And I went directly to Anthony's video and did the same thing and, and brought out uh, panoramic images. So what you'll see in the background is, is this arc in the background. Each one of these represents one screen grab from the video going through this, this series all the way around to basically this point, which allowed me to determine basically how far the camera would swing through the arc during the video. So from point to point is the extent of the video footage that we had available for analysis. And what it gets interesting is when we do this, so right now the camera is like I said, top dead center of the uh, here sphere i set it uh, in this case i set it at 52 feet so if i zoom into back to the camera here you'll see that it's way we put that at the top here going over 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 this stuff is pretty small but when it gets kind of interesting is the camera elevation where anthony was standing is 52 feet above sea level. The lighthouse, its foundation begins at 84 feet, and then there's a foundation part, and then the lighthouse, and so forth, so that it ends up at about 100. And, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think it's there's something at the very, very top of it if you add it all up and compile it to its focal point. But that's the top of the lighthouse. So, in, in essence, Anthony physically in St. B's is standing physically below. The lighthouse when he was looking across the water so just keep that in mind because it'll be important here in a minute 
so what I'm going to do now is zoom back out a little bit. I'm going to set the center reference point uh, cursor to selected to the center of the earth. And I'll just zoom it real quick here and show you that's down in the middle of the earth. And the camera at the top is where it's supposed to be at 52 feet above sea level. I'm going to grab that camera and rotate it backwards. So it's going to it's going to move right now because it's it's actually physically in the Isle of Man, right? In the dirt <laughs> underground. So I'm going to move it backwards to the point and maintain 52 feet above sea level until we get to St. B's distance away from the target, which is the lighthouse. And that'll put it at 31.55 miles over the radius of these. So rotate on the x-axis and bring it backwards to, I'll get it as close as I can so you can see that it's 31.58 miles. Let's see, I want to be really, really precise. We can rotate it on the X, 31.5486, so 31.55 miles. That's close enough for me within an inch. So now this is where it gets fun. We can start doing the, the analysis of the, the picture and see where things are pointing and what we're looking at. I'll put the cursor to the camera. Uh, let's see, cursor to the camera. I'm just going to scale that out so it's a little bigger. We can see it a little easier. We can tell which frame we're looking at in the background in the composite image. I'll temporarily hide the panoramic one here. This, this is the high resolution one. We don't seem to have the panoramic on our image for some reason nope. the actual picture is that correct is that... <clears throat> on the bottom here i'm going to turn it on on the bottom here oh okay okay so now when i zoom in on the bottom frame here you'll see that now we're starting this is a panoramic one so this one isn't the the uh, high contrast one quite yet i'll show you that after but this is just to show you that the camera swinging through the frames this is the auto man where it actually Theoretically, it would be to proper elevation. I didn't show you that, but at this point here at the top of the Alman is 2,013 feet precisely, and this would be sea level. So, this represents the bulge of 169 feet of water between Anthony, who is the camera, and the camera is now at negative 612 feet. So, it's gone backwards and over the bulge in reverse to its point where it, should, where it should be, and is looking back at the lighthouse, and it's technically 612 feet below sea level. So it's trying to look up and over 169 feet of water right, to try to maintain a target of the lighthouse. So really, in the image, when I turn off the, uh, the Isle of Man model and zoom into the picture, because these are lined up, you'll see there there is no lighthouse it's physically impossible to see it because it's behind 169 feet of water over the bulge and you're also 600 feet below sea level technically on the other side not below sea level but over the arch right you've gone backwards over the arch and so you have to make up for that and the only way to do that is to basically turn off this giant wall of water to show that technically you're still looking at the lighthouse which was filmed Precisely right there. So there's the light that I showed you before. This is the this is the lighthouse shining the light, and in the model, this is the lighthouse right where it's supposed to be. And we toggle it on and off so we can see that in the images that Randy had composited, that little bit of pixel is what you're actually seeing of the lighthouse itself. It's where it's basically supposed to be at sea level. Can you turn on the water while we've got it in the uh, near field? Yeah. Yeah. So there would be, this is the water basically toggling the earth curved water on and off. 
right? So that's how far beneath sea level or behind the curve you would really be to scale. This is the closest observable landmark. This is more gold lighthouse, not right. the lighthouse, just to be clear to the audience. Sorry, I, I should have done this at the beginning. So the lighthouse yes, that Ranty took you yeah, to yeah. was on the very furthest left tip at 51 miles. This is not. This is at 30, I've forgotten the exact figure. 31.55 miles. So this is the closest point, observable point of the lighthouse. Now, I'll show you on the map here. I'll turn on the, uh, yeah, the man again so you'll see it appear in the top image. So in the top image, we have the camera looking at this point on the other man to that lighthouse. I can talk about, you'll see the dot, that little tiny dot represents the lighthouse triangulated to its exact position to the foot. So it's within a foot of its real life location. And we've scaled the images, the panoramic view to that within a foot. So that's the accuracy we're dealing with. So now I can turn, I'll have to turn off the model here, the other man, because it's in the way of the images actually, and the water, because you can't see anything because the water's in the way. Now let's see, we'll turn that off and turn off the water. So now what we'll do, so the audience can see exactly how this model is working is it replicates in a 3D sense all the work that Ranty and Anthony have done and that I can take the camera, which you can see is at 90 degrees. This is the, the real elevation of negative 612 feet. And now I can pan it left and right through the image to determine the arc swing of the camera. So throughout the footage, it swings approximately 13 degrees to the left and approximately 19 degrees to the right from dead center of zero. So that's the, although it's slow, because you, you can get the idea of how the camera's actually panning. So, and identify the stuff that Randy pointed out. So this is the lighthouse coming down the coast. <clears throat> There's a little town to the left of it. Keep panning along. There's the ones on the hill cliff that he followed along. Coming through, there's the boat. This is, um, what's that place called? Uh, Douglas is in the background and, and Bella Canal, is it? And then all the way down to... It is, yeah. Yeah, all the way down to the, the point that Randy identified as basically the end of the other man is approximately in here somewhere. About, about, and that's right about there give or take in this second last frame so then i'll turn the uh, i'll turn on the overlay of the other man again in wider just, frames just, so you just can before see you do on the map. sorry sorry to interrupt yeah. that's that's the point of the lighthouse that was identified by ranty a couple of days ago right. so the exact marker marks the the, the lighthouse we yeah. first discussed because that's a new find and that's the end of the island yeah, it, yeah it's in this frame so you can see that when i click on the map underneath the wireframe map at the point where the layout says it appears in the picture down below here at that point that Grant had identified as the end of the Isle of Man. So now we know that when we swing the camera, keep on swinging to the left, you can clearly see that the camera is no longer looking at anything near the Isle of Man. So anything, anything in this last frame that appears in the footage is 100% for sure which you know, zoom way, way in here, you can see it. This land in the bottom from clearly from this, well, it's actually beyond this point, but anything in that frame is 100% undeniably not the Isle of the Man. And then I'll just, I won't bring, I won't bring on the map just yet. I'll swing the camera all the way to the other end. And let's see, go out of here, grab the camera. Back to the 19 degrees this way. Into the last frame there. Roughly where the, that's the other end. That's the last bit of land we see over here in this frame. In the top frame, you'll see it up here. And I'll turn on the map again. Yeah, the man. 
and you can see that it's just skimming across the very end but what gets it interesting here is elevations so this is where Shane had explained uh, where the elevations are and it's it's my opinion too that that boat because this is where it gets a little tricky with perspective and refraction and all kinds of fun stuff happening in here but there is some refraction on this boat there's a, basically the center line of the boat that's being reflected into the water which means that this boat is far beyond it's beyond the horizon of 8.66 miles i mean it's, it's way beyond the horizon and being doubled up and that tells you that it's definitely behind i don't know why i can't identify or swear to where where i think it's coming and going to that's a different idea altogether it's uh 100 without a doubt in my opinion behind the out of man is the only way that you'd see that because when we compare that boat in the image to the other stuff that's in the image i rotate the camera there is actually Back a boat the on the very, version. very far left where we've got Ireland on the left or Southern Ireland on the left. Um, there's another boat in the very, very there's last a... frame in the near. Oh, is there way, way over? I didn't in know. The, it's in the near foreground, I think. Is that right? Yeah, on the very last so frame. So this I boat. Like, there we go. Yeah, okay, I'll go swing at that and have a look at That'll that one too, yeah. <laughs> this boat here, I mean, you can tell that this boat is in front of the Isle of Man because the water line is above the center of the boat and you, there's no there's no uh, major refraction happening. So refraction will only happen if the if the object is behind the refraction limit line and or in elevation above this refraction gradient, right? There's a, there's a point where refraction kind of kicks in and stops. So you can tell that this boat is in the near field and the other boat is in the far field and beyond the refraction limits in the, in the data. You say there's another boat in the far left? It's in the very close foreground on the last frame. Oh Almost. yes, okay, yeah. I don't. It might be in this image. Let me go see. Did I leave it? In? Yeah. So yeah. So here's another good example of that, right? So you can clearly tell that obviously this boat, and given its resolution, and you can identify the. I almost see the guy in the cab, right? So it's a small fishing boat, right? or smaller fishing. Still not very. Still a big boat, but much closer. So that's what happens, right? If you're if you're ahead of this line of the refraction, the object is closer to you, and if you're beyond that line of refraction, the object is is beyond beyond the horizon of eight point six six miles. So it's about I guess that would be kind of the end of that. So clearly it's Ireland on both ends, in my opinion. And we can tell when we turn I'll turn on the map here one more time, the Isle of Man overlay. Um, I can do it this way too, just for right there in wireframe. Right, so clearly that boat, you know, that boat is in this frame and much closer, you know, somewhere along here. Yep. So one hundred percent, without a doubt. In, in that sense, the, this model, technically, it fails because I, I cannot replicate on a spherical surface anything that's seen in the footage at all, period, like nothing. Like, it just doesn't work. It takes a long time to determine that, but it is true that when the Earth is on and you're looking at it from the left-hand side, and the other thing that's interesting to note is that when you pan, let me see, I'll put the camera here to center of frame in the panoramic. So this is at that distance, this is all the other man you would actually see. You wouldn't see, like I said, the waters in front of you now because you're 600 feet deep. And we rotate it left to right. You'll start to see that it doesn't take much swinging of the camera to start to see the uh, the water drop away from you both left and right i'll show you from the top down and the top part here this is what would happen in reality on a spherical ball water surface with precision is when you're looking on zero point towards the other man you get a wall of water in front of you 
And as you sweep left, you, should, you will see the, the water drop away from you because now you're on the spherical surface, standing still, looking, panning left and right. So now we're getting, when we're at 90 degrees to the left, you'll see now you're starting to see that this here is the worst uh, horizon line. This is the refracted drop. I put them all in here basically to their proper heights. This line represents, you know, 349 feet of curvature. From this line to the water line is 349.41 feet of curvature. And then I can do the same and rotate it to the right-hand side. All the way around, we'll see it come back up to zero, basically the horizon. Rotate around to the right. So no matter which way you swing the camera, it's constant because you're you're standing on the spherical surface looking around and spinning your camera around in a circle so in order to see targets and i'll just turn the, just to kind of drive that point home a little bit is turn off the out of man turn off the earth water surface And you have to like basically keep tilting the camera down. Like the further you go back, the further you reverse from your target point where you started and go backwards over the curve, you would continually have to bring the camera point down, 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 down to make up. So now the camera's pointing down by 90.257 degrees in order to try to maintain your target in the center of your picture. The further this camera goes backwards, the further you have to keep tilting it down, 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 down. So I hope that makes sense to, to folks that you would see curvature going left and right and down and backwards in all directions. There should be curvature going away from you from any point on a sphere because it's a ball. Any questions? No. Can you give um, a, a summary in regards to why in the respect that there is an explanation from the heliocentric side that would dictate that in order to see things based on the physics that you have shown, we would have to have holographic projections of these targets. Could you kind of summarize that using the model? Um, well, yeah, if you, if you had, uh, you can see that there's this 600 foot wall of water in front of you. So in order for, let's see, in order for, where's that? I'll actually do it physically here for you. And let's see, turn off the water. This will mess up the model a little bit, but I'll, I'll do it just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so there's the frame that we know that the image is in. This is where the lighthouse actually is. So in order for it to appear to you as an observer, you would physically have to raise that image up high enough to be seen on the horizon. So it has to come up, you know, the 600 feet that you're looking, or the 169 feet that you're looking through from that perspective. So you would have to be essentially holographically projected. It's actually where you, in theory, where you see it in reality in on the globe model is not where it is. Where it is being raised up to the horizon in all directions in 360 degree panoramic view, everything, nothing is where you think it is. According to the globe physics, so the, in, the, not, in, in this instance, the entire happen. island is looming above where it actually is. So that where we see now is obviously where things actually are. It's a real photograph. It's real. However, the spherical model dictates that what we see here is a mirage being loomed up above the Earth wall that is being superimposed Correct. on top of a real image in three dimensions in this software. So when that blue curved line toggles on and off, that is a literal wall that is there in your world if you live on a sphere. That is not an effect. That That's the literal wall of Earth that blocks our view. And everything beyond that, because it is physically there in your world, is being projected up from... Right. It's real location. That's what we mean when we'd say we don't have line of sight in the heliocentric model. We do have line of sight because we see it 
in the flat earth. And just further to that, when you look at the distances that are involved, that curve starts to drop off exponentially relative to the observer. As it drops off, it gradually gains more and more momentum and drops off quicker and quicker and quicker. The reality is, if that was some kind of looming mirage illusion, then it means that it's conforming perfectly to a flat Earth based on being a curve that's exponentially getting worse to relative to the observer, and it does it perfectly. So it means that either the atmospheric conditions were perfect to see all the way around the Earth, or the Earth is flat. The chances of it actually being an atmospheric phenomena that just so happened to conform perfectly to the spherical shape of the Earth is it's zero. It's impossible. It is literally impossible. Hypothetically, it may well be possible, but practically, no. Refraction is a continuous variable. We see it. It stretches and shrinks. This is not what we're seeing with refraction. We see a little bit of refraction on the horizon and we can, we can quantify it. The Earth is flat. Now, what I want to do, if it's, is it okay if I share my screen just to wrap this point up? Because it, Oh, no, he's got it on screen now. The curve calcs, um, if we're seeing Ireland in the background, and it is calculated mathematically, practically, um, three-dimensionally, autocadly, we're looking at Ireland. It's a distance of 145 miles at a viewer height of 52 feet. That's 1.99 miles of refracted hidden. And the refractive hidden value allows for atmospheric standard refraction. But if I'm right, Chris, is it correct to say that the hidden value is actually the incorrect value that we should be using because we should actually be using drop? I was always told to use hidden. I was told that by a particular ball earther, and I always just did it because I didn't realize. Well, yeah, actually, it like when you when put the camera top dead center and then take it back to your distance of 31 miles, the, uh, the drop is uh, actually, let's see if the camera is at. Roughly where I put it was 612 feet, give or take. Which means that the, the physical drop, which one was this one? Make sure I get the right numbers in the top there. Well, that was at 54 miles. Yeah. Well, let's try that. Just to make sure here. Let's put the, why not? I'll try to be concise here and quick. Cursor to selected, grab the camera, and rotate it on the X back to 54 miles. We hope we're going to lose our picture in the front here. Let's go to 54 miles, approximately 1,900 feet. I can go a little further on the camera. But, right, so it's the drop drop is what you're looking for. <clears throat> so we shouldn't it's be actually a phys the, phys the physical drop is the physical drop is this number the bulge of water between you and the target is this number that's the horizon line at eight miles so that the horizon line at eight miles when we look from the top now becomes like a, a circle around here so that's where this the point would converge between you and and that point so that means we shouldn't, miles. Be using, we shouldn't be using the hidden value. We should be using the drop value. Right. Well, in that case, then that takes it from 1.99 miles up to 2.28 miles. On that's in count, accounting for standard refraction, which obviously is based on seven sixths of the, of the apparent radius of the Earth. But in reality, it's th it's 2.34 miles at hidden and uh, 2.66 miles. It's, it's more than two and a half miles of curvature on the yeah. geometric shape of the earth that's based on 145 miles to dublin on the far left right yeah, like, exactly like in a nutshell on this calculator these numbers on top are the actual physical real numbers of where the objects actually physically are so you got to look like in this case at 54 miles you have to look through 500 feet of water you're physically 2,000 feet below where you started on the curve Etc. So these are the these are the physical numbers, and then they just added refraction to essentially account for how far things would actually have to rise. So this is everything coming back up to the horizon line. So the rise, it's it's in reverse, right? It's been just reversed. So it's uh, 
not accurate. Like I failed. You, you failed to make that happen in reality. So, so just three quick questions then, Chris. Yeah. Are we definitely seeing Ireland in the background on the far left? Absolutely, yeah. yeah so and I think so in the north. In the north too, I think it's also Ireland. Um, and just yeah. like Randy says, it's it's a little harder to determine. I think in the north. Uh, yeah, in the north, we're... there's a chimney that remains outstanding, and I really want people to help me with identifying that because I don't, I can't, we can't identify it. We can't find it. it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Um, but so if we're seeing Ireland on the far south. That means we've got a distance of 145 miles approximately to the range of uh, mountains that we're looking at. It's 52 feet in observer height. That's that is literally now 2.66 miles. If we're going to disregard standard refraction because it's based on an apparent radius and actually based on the geometry of the apparent Earth that we live on, 2.66 miles of apparent curvature, and we see it. We see it. There is no explanation for this. Why is it that this is even possible? And the only explanation is the Earth that we see that we live on, that we all realize observably, demonstrably, repeatedly, verifiably is flat. We've, we've had 20, 25, 30 hangouts. I've stood my ground against all the ballers. And the reality is this, it's been peer reviewed by the cream of the ballers crop. And it stands in its own merit. It stands by its own merit. What I would say in uh, my professional opinion would be based on the LIDAR map and survey datums and the elevations on the tip of the island. man there's some cliffs that come down through here beyond this represents like the higher points so there's a high spot and then there's cliffs that kind of wash out and then the, the coast is kind of washed out where that lighthouse is and there's a lot of areas down here that are only like 20 feet high right the lighthouse itself is like almost on the beach so i would say that this little bit is basically this little kind of bit going through here and this point right here is the absolute end of the Isle of Man, right? which would be in that camera frame right about here somewhere. Let me zoom back out. Like it's, that's where it's all you're looking basically through this section. Right? So Two quick questions from chat, Chris. Um, what, when it says in your professional opinion, uh, they're asking, what is your profession? What is your profession? Um, and the other question, the other question um, is the, isle, the the mountain range we're identifying in Ireland is the mountain ranges that sit south of Dublin, 145 miles from the observer. What I would like, if you can. Um, I spent 22 years approximately in the construction, construction industry and construction management and uh, quality control and design of uh, emergency equipment and using AutoCAD and those types of things. So I'm a engineering consultant and Canadian Welding Bureau level two welding inspection quality control manager. That's where I come from. It's construction. So I would have, you know, I reviewed survey reports and calibration equipment and all that stuff for major projects, refineries and mining industry, mostly yeah, construction. Can, can you give us, I'm going to ask Ranty for any final opinions before you do Chris but in a moment can you give us a, a summary that has the words at the end the earth is flat but before you do um, if you can hear us um, you've got your mic closed at the moment can you hear us Shane I can yeah can you give us any any summary or any uh, words that you wanted to add before I get Chris to round up with a, a, a concise scientific summary those are the right words. Yeah, if anybody if anybody wants the the composite, the um, just hit me up. Just give me a, a message in the in YouTube, and I'll I'll give you a link to my Google Drive, and you can download it, and you can use it, you can frame it. I don't care what you do with it, but it's clearly one of the best proofs of flat Earth that I've ever seen. I agree. It's observable, repeatable, verifiable. We can all go there. We can do that observation. You just need a very clear day, a P900, plenty of memory card, and plenty of batteries, and you can get it, and anybody can do it. Um, it has already been peer-reviewed to some degree by um, two, flat -er two ball earthers who failed to observe the, dis the observation that I got. And the reason is because the atmosphere wasn't as clear. I got it on a very, very clear day. Um, no, very minimal refraction. You can see the extent of the refraction. It's not non-standard refraction if, there's, if there is such a thing. We can all do it. We can all go back to that same location and you can see Dublin. It's 145 miles at a view height of 52 feet. It's 2.66 miles below the curve of the Earth. 
2.66 miles. Now, in the context of the 16 miles is the bandied one for the curvature, and we're talking about 145 miles. I mean, as a percentage, that's it's like 10 times or more. No, not quite 10 times. It's just below 10 times the distance, and that's claimed as being the proof of the curve. Well, in, in a nutshell, for me, I, mean, I've, I have failed to reproduce the footage and the observable evidence as seen in the video and the composites. So I failed to reproduce that in any way, shape, or form on a spherical surface. I failed to detect any curvature so whatsoever on the plane in which we live on. The only so way to reproduce that footage is, is on the flat plane, as far as I can. Perfect. As far as I can tell. This image is of the flat Earth. The Earth is indeed flat. It's flat, yeah. We can see Ireland when we shouldn't be seeing Ireland. There is no way we should see Ireland in the footage, and it's demonstrably, evidently, repeatedly, scientifically verifiable. It's there. You can all do it for yourself. There are numerous comments in the videos that say, I can, re I can regularly see Ireland from England and England from Ireland. Yet yeah, people in the FE discussion don't realize it, but there are people that see it daily. One lady claimed that she could see the boat flying in, or flying in, that she could see the boat sailing into the port of Douglas with binoculars when standing on St. B's head. Not meant to happen. It's behind the curve. And we're seeing 140 miles that to the mountain range at the south of Dublin. We're also seeing Ireland in Northern Ireland on the, on the far right of the image. All of that land should not be visible. Did you have something you Before I go here too, I'd just like to say a big, big uh, thank you to, to Ranty and all his research on the uh, Google Earth and the compositing and the brilliant work on all doing all that work and uh, Anthony for your footage and take the time to go out there and do it. And, yeah, and, and I, I've got Nathan a, I for both teams hosting this Hangout and channels, but it's been a great, great honor to do the research and I've learned a lot even just doing it about the Isle of Man and everything else and the people there and, and uh, it's been awesome. So one day I hope to go there and check it out in person. I, I agree. Ranty's been a hero. Um, he's done all the he's done all the empirical um, research on this because he knows how to do it. Um, Chris has modelled it in the opposing, and um, Nathan has been gracious enough to present it and allow me to speak what I believe to be the truth. Um, I stood my ground all the way through this. I did not change my position. I do not accept that the model should be doing anything other than what the model does. It is what it is. It is demonstrably flat, regardless of the maths that go behind it. Nathan, what do you think about the evidence? Um, for me, that's uh, that's pretty much it. I think that's a, a nice place to probably end this stream. Uh, you have demonstrated that the Earth is indeed flat and absolutely unequivocally not spherical. So I'm going to say a massive thank you, first of all, to Anthony Riley for capturing this image and sharing it with us. Also, Shane Cook for compositing and researching Google Earth to the nth degree, almost insanity, and to Chris Monk for doing all of the modeling in 3D. I've been Nathan Oakley. And